Okay, it's streaming now on YouTube. So let me just uh, state this. The public notice, the Board of Trustees of the Village of Warwick will hold a budget work session for fiscal year 2021 through 2022 at 9.30 a.m. on the following dates, Monday, March 8th, Tuesday, March 9th, and Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. Pursuant to Governor Cuomo's Executive Order 202.1, Village of Warwick's budget sessions will be conducted virtually via Zoom video conference and they may be viewed live by public on the Village of Warwick's New York, of Warwick, New York YouTube channel. Um, and that is the notice. So um, if somebody wants to um, ask questions, they may. Uh, we, may we, we won't be able to answer them, uh, but we will follow up, so. Okay, um, so Mr. Veneri, uh, Mr. Mosier, you're on. Oh, George, good. Bookkeeping stuff. We may approve certain things in the budget this year, but some of them will be subject to whatever the results of the in income and expenditures for the year ending May 21. So after the um, report is complete for May of 21, we may come back to um, the department heads and ask them to uh, delay certain expenditures. Hi, George, we just began. Okay. So starting with uh, 1620. Should I just start with my repairs to the building? We're up to repairs to the building. Yeah. Uh, the front steps going from the first floor to the second floor need to be reinforced. Uh, there's some painting that needs to be done in the building. The second floor bathroom fix up uh, was never done this year due to the fact that we missed so much work. Uh, they Um, you're muted. You're muted suddenly. And that's all, thanks. <laughs> uh, I don't know where it was. Front steps uh, going up to the courtroom need to be reinforced. We need to do some painting in the building. The second floor bathroom, I said, didn't get done this year. It was on the budget. We never got to it. Uh, the second floor upstairs needs some carpeting, and the clerk's office needs carpeting now that we did the new... Uh, desks and uh, countertop. And then I just put down any unanticipated repairs because seeing, it seems this building is getting older and much like the uh, gutters on the side, things seem to be popping up every day. I kept it as low as I could. Most of the, everything, almost everything will be done in-house by my guys, uh, except for the carpet. Uh, when you say the second floor security upgrades, what, what is that? What page are you on? I think that comes later. Yeah, that's under special projects, sir. And that is uh, more of, I still have to finish uh, making walls. Uh, I imagine at some point there'll probably have to be a camera in the hallway that's going to be made between the two, the DPW side and the building side of that back section of the upstairs. Uh, we still need to do a few other things between uh, the DPW part and the break area that has to be tidied up. So it's uh, more uh, fixing and building walls to create a more secure place than it is actual security. It's not all cameras and alarms.
And the clerk's office, the amount that's there is just for the carpeting? That's all I put down for them so far, yes. All, everything else that's been done, we either have budgeted for this year and hope I can get it by June, uh, for the, except for the bulletproof windows. And I do believe that's under the, that is covered under the upgrades to clerk's office under special projects. Mayor jumped ahead. Um, <laughs> well, I, I'm trying to get my uh, copy. After repairs, of it, it goes to the fire alarm, which we're under contract with NAS for uh, 4,200 for the closed circuit television and 900 for the uh, monthly access to the fire alarm. The maintenance supply is basically just all the things that we need to replace, uh, personal protective equipment that we got supplied due to COVID. We have to have uh, a few months of everything on hand for the men uh, and ladies work in the building, uh, village hall supplies. And then the special up projects were, was the ones that are the upgrades to the clerk's office, which includes that glass going across the front new uh, countertop and the stuff for the second floor. So where's the carpeting? The carpet is under the first page under repairs. Carpet, it needs to be done in the clerk's office and some on the second oh. floor. The second floor is over by where Kathy and I sit. I don't know if you've seen it. There's a rip going from end to end on the whole entire. Oh, yeah. Uh, but if we do it right with the wall, that might cover that. And there might be no need for that. So that's just a, I, I, I need to get the carpet downstairs done first. Yeah, I, th I think the security upgrades on the second floor are important. Yeah, I, I still have money in this year's budget. Again, I know you're going to tell me I'm telling you the same thing over and over again, but you're going to hear it. the whole budget is the COVID. Everything that we had scheduled from March 17th of last year went to split schedule, half days. This one's out. Everyone's out. So a lot of my projects went into the half burner i'm going to try to catch up as much as i can in the next hopefully april and may will be very weather wise helpful to me but a lot of it is going to be get what i can at the end of this year with whatever money's left because again not to be a broken record all the money we spent to start this covid uh, process with ppe for everybody and you know putting these plastic boots up everywhere and everything we've done has depleted a lot of what I needed to get done now, but we will make do with what we have and try to finish as much as we can this year. But that's why like things like the bathroom have rolled over. Keep moving. What do you want me to do guys? Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Central garage. Central Garage. Central Garage, uh, I have not bought a generator this year. I do not think I will have the money by the time uh, June rolls around. So I put the generator back in the budget for the shop. Uh, we are still currently hooked off of the microfiltration plant. Um, three times, I think this past year, we've lost power. And only one time did it have enough uh, to feed us back and actually open the doors. It is more for like just flicking the lights and stuff. It does not feed us enough power to keep operations moving if we need to keep for an extended period of time. Uh, repairs to the building there. The garage doors are with the size of them, the constant maintenance on them. The front gate that we have that keeps people out of the shop. The rollers need to be replaced. They have frozen numerous times over the winter. They are a, uh, they want us to change them to plastic composites so that maybe they won't freeze as fast. And I'd like to- Can they do that? Can we do that before the end of the year? Or are you afraid you don't have money? I can see, I don't know if I'm gonna have the money. I've been moving funds around all the time just to keep moving with what we got. The biggest budget surplus or whatever, most money I have still now is in salt, which I have a quota I have to fulfill. And then I have some money left in, road paving in the extra line that not included in chips and that I'm very hopeful that in May the asphalt plants will open up and I can get maybe something done before this budget is over whether it be Memorial Park Drive or Park Lane or Oakland Court one of these roads that is in desperate need of repair 
if the money's still there and I haven't COVID related it, I want to try to get one more paving session done before the budget turns over. The, is the gate operating now? Yes, sir. It's, so, mostly when, it's mostly when it gets very, very cold. Uh, we've done everything we can to keep the snow away from it, but the uh, company has recommended that we change them to these nylon gate rollers. They say that you know the, the cast ones we have are what's causing it to freeze, metal on metal. Um, if you go to the utilities uh, item, it, uh, no, I have to find it. It, it, it seems like that's, I mean, we've never been, it, it's, it's down and I can understand why it'd be down some from uh, during the last year. Um, but it, you know, it looks like we just haven't, unless you go back two or three years, we haven't been at 20,000 and we're not going to get it this year. We were 15 the year, 13 the year before, almost 14. Is there, is there a reason why um, that you can think of that we're, that we've, you know, we're, we're down quite a bit. Why we're down. It's yeah. Probably because we've only used half the building some days, you know, I, I, if we're not in half the garage, I don't light it up. If we're not in the shop, uh, there's probably many a day where we didn't even put the heat on that much at the shop there because there wasn't anybody around or things like that. Uh, not to, but I also don't do that number. That is a treasurer number. Yeah, and that just goes off of an average. Um, we still have three months worth of bills to pay out of there. That would be a number I wouldn't want right. to touch too much. Okay. Because we've gone over budget 2017, 18, and 19. So it's only the last, you know, 2020 and this year that we're below budget. So that's kind of concerning. I wouldn't really want to touch those funds. Okay. See how it goes another year. Yeah. As far as the generator, why can't you purchase that this year if we were gonna use um, equipment reserve money for that anyway? They take, it just takes a long time to get it, Sadie. I can oh, order okay. it today and you won't see it till probably October. They are so slow with that kind of thing. Uh, I can certainly start the project in motion, but it will it will go into- Next year. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Walking thirty three twenty parking. I put down for equipment. We need to replace a few of the existing meters uh, every year. We have to replace them, whether they get hit by cars, frozen in October, hit by my plow trucks, anything. Uh, and then, if there are any additional spots that we were looking for, I just put a five thousand dollar price tag. Uh, meters are getting kind of expensive, uh, but it's just a, a placeholder. Uh, repairs to meters every year, uh, whether the, we're, ma we're able to get the ones with their quarters jammed in them, but there's other things that we need to send them out to the manufacturer for to reset. Uh, under special department supplies, the cards that we put in the meters every Christmas season, the happy holidays, park here for free as long as you want. It doesn't matter to anybody. Cards uh, are all pretty much outdated and in very bad repair. Uh, I, the wording probably has to be changed on and maybe the dates and all that. So I'd like to get those things this year if we could. Signage, we are doing a lot of signage updates throughout the parking lots. Uh, I'm sure you've seen through the vouchers through the town. I'm constantly buying signs, uh, whether it be for the charging station, which we're about to buy ones for that down on uh, Spring Street. We're looking to get newer signs that talk about what each parking lot is and how long they're available for. Uh, so it's just, and that charge point contract, I do believe, Kat, no, nope, that wouldn't come out of there anyway. That doesn't, you can scratch that. Charge point comes out of different contract. So it's just basically signage and things to keep the parking lots. I'm going to have to paint a few of these parking lots again this year. 
just to touch up, especially like First Street and Chase Lot. Chase Lot's probably going to take a little bit more because we're going to probably number every one of those spots. So that will come into effect probably a little later. Are, are we going to do that or are we going to have a contractor? No, I do believe we can do most of it. All I do is buy the number of stencils. We have a few, but they're not going to, they're an odd size. And I'd rather keep everything uniform with, you know, whether it be a four inch stencil just for every number. And no, between the guys I have painting, they can take care of that. So for charge point, we've got $350 in there. Um, I believe the fee is, um, now, now I've, I, I've lost it. Oh, the fee, my understanding is the fee is $280, $280 per port per year. So we've got two parts on the one that's installed now. So that would say it should be $560. Um, and then the other question is, you know, are we, I would assume we're going to install this one on at Spring Street lot or wherever. And so that's going to double it to 1,000, whatever. Um, but there's there was a there was a, a sheet of paper um, a charge point quotation in our packet that included you know options for um, doing it for three years or five years and the the price um, comes down somewhat if if we choose to do one of those other um, options. Do we do we want to look at putting money in the budget to do the three year or the five year plan? And and in fact, that quotation says for for the two port, it's going to be six hundred and fifty eight dollars. Well, there's two ports on each machine, right? Well, we've got three hundred. What do we have? Three hundred dollars in there for it, right? Or 350? I, I don't know. I, it's yeah. so small on my screen, I can't read it. 350. Thank you. Yes, depending on which choice you go with, I'll have to add that to the overall. Well, based on the quote, the minimum's going to be $658 for just the one with the two ports. And if we put the second one in, it's going to be double that. Yeah, and, and if the we do, one is scheduled to go in this year, I'm probably before June, that will be in. The electricity is working and, on it. And, and if we do our annualized cost goes for the from the option one, which is one year from to from six hundred and fifty eight dollars down to five hundred and twenty seven dollars per year. So I'm just questioning whether we want to take advantage of, of that, uh, you know, price lo lowering the annualized price. We have to pay for the five year up front. Yep. So we're not saving any money because we got to put the money out. Is that right? We also uh, should get a new quote. This is from June. And, and I'm kind of surprised because the quotes I was working off of were like, I think 260 per port. So. So exactly how many ports are going, do we need? We have two in use right now. Uh, we'll have another two in use probably before June. So we have we need four point point ports. So that would be six fifty eight times two. Is that it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we should change the three fifty to thirteen sixteen.
Hey, Bill. Yes. Um, have you uh, done some homework or research on um, a parking um, meter system that without meters, you know, with uh, let's say on the South Street parking lot, which we can probably monitor more readily because there's an in and an out, you know. Right. Um, are, are we uh, thinking that that might be a possibility? You know, I've been tempted to call that salesman that, uh, that, that came in a while ago and I haven't yet. Um, I'll, I'll give him a quick call. I mean, I, again, I, I'm not sure how many meters you need to make, make it worthwhile. Well, I don't think they would be meters. There would be or, like a stanchion. Or, or, I, mean, that's, I understand. I mean, that's the system. How many, how many systems, how many parking space right. do you need right. to, to have it make sense? So I, I will give them a call. I, I would uh, really like to kind of do a, you know, test program, you know, like a trial program. Okay. That particular parking lot uh, becomes abused. Um, and, um, you know, we want shoppers to be there. Uh, so that might be part of the remedy. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll do that. So uh, you, if you can do it sometime this week, so we could maybe come back and talk about that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We're up to uh, A5010, Street Administration. <clears throat> Uh, for equipment, it's time for Kathy to get a new computer upstairs. Her chair is awful looking shoddy too. Uh, on, the, on the computer, could I interrupt? Um, our, it doesn't look like we're getting her a laptop. That's correct? No. I'm, um, should we should we be looking to convert to, to laptops? But does Kathy need a laptop? I mean, she works here. She's got a lot of well, paperwork and stuff. It's yeah. never like she can work remotely. Um, well, I don't, I don't know that she can't work remotely. I mean, I'm sure we lost a ton of time when she was, you know, out of the office during COVID when if she had a laptop, uh, there would be things she could be processing bills and, and things. So, I, I mean, I, that, that's... That's my thought on the matter um, for the a little additional expense to have the uh, to have it have it be mobile. So if we get into the situation again where we you know, have to go to half staff, close down the building, whatever, um, then it allows people to work from home. I mean, we we spent we, we lost a whole lot more in efficiency and work getting done than a laptop would have cost. Okay, we'll just have to get a new quote. Maybe, uh, maybe it's twofold, uh, Barry. Maybe it is uh, generally, and this could be shared amongst departments that we need, let's say two or three laptops that in the event that we have the need for any department that that is available. Um, you know, the downloading, I don't think is that difficult or, you know, it's really a matter of um, connecting to our system. Yeah, and I don't know what Kathy's, um, we're trying to get her on the PO system that Denise and I use um, so it can be more universal because right now Kathy uses a separate PO system and I don't know if that current system, if that's downloaded software, what what is it? I have no idea. So she can get onto ours. However, that's a download onto the computer. It's not web-based. Um, so for Kathy's particular circumstance, she would need, I think, a separate computer in order to gain access to that, unless we set up some sort of VPN access, if she ever were to work remotely and could log into her computer from home. But that's a whole different thing.
All good. What's the difference in price? Is it is it enough to worry about now? I'm sure it's a few hundred bucks. Yeah, the regular office computer, we've got a quote here. I think it's thousand bucks total. So I imagine a laptop be a little bit more. Yeah. So right now we have a thousand dollars for a chair and a computer. Is that what I put? Yeah, well the chair is only a couple hundred bucks, so might have to make it fifteen hundred. I don't even know where that is on. Well, and the chair should come out of office supplies, quite honestly. Not equipment. Ah, see the moves down there. So I'll take the chair out and put it under office supplies. I got to raise the office supplies by $400 for a chair. Okay. So what's office supplies now? 24? 2400. And then leave um, the equipment this alone in the event the laptops are a reality or that laptop's a reality? I can get a, a quote from the computer guy for a laptop. To, to see the difference. Okay. Our maintenance contracts are the same. Uh, your clock on a railroad green. The iWorks is the system that we use for upstairs. Nicomco is the radios in the trucks. Uh, Copy your stuff. Everything is all regular maintenance contracts. The training is for uh, me, I guess, to go to highway school, safety school, and then NICOM school up in uh, Ithaca. Bus operations, I don't know. Hey, Mike, Mike, where's the training for the guys? Uh, they're under street training. Okay. We'll get to that then. Yes, sir. A5110, streets and highway. Under equipment, I am in desperate need of an asphalt roller. Uh, the one we had is probably well past its prime. Uh, as we were using it last year, it lost all its gears and rolled down. Uh, I don't know if it was... Arbor Drive or something, we had to stop it The with another machine, uh, it is gone. It's done for, uh, Bob can't fix it. Uh, we looked into anyone else fixing it. No one really wants to even take a crack at it. They're usually around 15 to 20,000. As of right now, with my equipment line, the way it is for the year that we're in, I may be able to get it now. The problem is, finding one that is state bid or uh, competitive bid or any of that. So I have emails out. I got phone calls to people. I'm just trying to find out if and when or whatever, but I'm in desperate need. So if it doesn't happen by June, which is a possibility, we rented one at the end of last year uh, to finish our projects. I may have to rent one before that, but that's why I kept it in this budget year coming up uh, for the four years I've done the budget, I've asked for a wood chipper every year. I understand the safety concerns of Mr. Cheney with the gloves uh, to stop the chipper. That is an added expense we can always look into, but I am now at the mercy of uh, either renting one. And as you've seen after the storms, it's very hard to rent anything around here because the homeowners and the small businesses are there quickly and beat us to it. And they can get a higher rate from them than they can from the village when they rent it. So I've been using the one from the village of Florida's. Theirs is also in pretty bad shape. It's almost to the point where they're going to be replacing it. Maybe it's something we could talk about a shared service at some point, but they are not interested right now. They think their chipper, if we don't keep using it, will last them probably another few years. Didn't we approve a chipper last year? No, sir. The chipper, I do believe, was thrown out after I walked out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think we got left in it. If it's in, I don't have them. I don't know. Maybe if, if it's, I'm going to try right now. 
if the I because I the dump truck that we bought came in under budget. So I do believe I have some funds to at least put my feelers out there and see if there's a roar at this point. It, it was in last year for 20,000. Chipper? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's a low ball. Let's talk about these two trucks. Uh, on, I gave, I think Sadie has a report there. I didn't print mine out this morning, but there is, I gave a equipment all of our equipment and there's trucks that are to the point now uh, we're doing very well. We have a lot of new equipment. I'm not going to tell you wrong. We have a new sweeper, new bucket truck, new loader, new dump truck, a couple new pickup trucks, but there are still pickup trucks that are in bad shape. They've been uh, 12 years old, 15 years old, beaten on every day, plow. The biggest issue is that we use these, pickup trucks to plow, whether it be plow a side road, plow a parking lot, plow main roads. Uh, we've had dump trucks go down during storms and we've had to use the pickup trucks to plow a whole route. So these trucks take quite a beating. Uh, I'd like to buy two new pickup trucks with plows this coming year, just to keep the fleet up to date and moving along. If you uh, need we didn't one, get that. If you needed summer. one, which one would you need? Between what, the trucks and the chipper? No, between the two trucks. The truck on the left. Truck on the left? <laughs> you said between the two. They're both the same. It's just two F F two fifty pickup trucks with plows. The, the two pickup trucks are the exact same. But where are what, what number are they? Number 10? Oh, what to get rid of? Yeah, 10 or 12, 13. I, I just replaced two of them this year, so I haven't gotten rid of the two old ones. They, they will be going out to auction. As soon as the winter season is over, I don't want to get rid of anything and cut myself short by selling a truck right now. So the only one that's really fair is pickup number 10. Is that the one you would replace? Sure. Yes, well, sir. What else were you going to replace? I think there's a 2 and a 12. I don't, I don't have the sheet in front of me, honestly, sir. I, I gave it away, and then that's no. how I roll. 12 is already uh, picked up. And, and we didn't get the sheet oh. either. Yeah, Mike just gave it to me on Friday. I had asked for it last minute. I can send it out to you. Yeah, please. So number 10 seems to be the one that we definitely have to replace. So would that be with an F-250 or an F-350? F-250. That is a 250. 250. I got the 350 this year to help uh with the towing we need that so we can tow our mini excavator and things around town if we had just one truck we would replace number 10 with a 250 is that right yes sir and you have a cost of thirty two thousand. is that real or do we need to keep forty thousand in there uh, we need to keep 40,000. The 32 is for the truck, and then we have to add the plow afterwards. And liner, bed liner, things like that. It's usually about six or seven thousand. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Moving on. Uh, Otto, I just want to wait. I just want to chime in that I do hope that we. Um, purchase a chipper. I think that it would be yeah. worthwhile, um, as, especially as Mike said, as you know, trying to find a rental can be extremely difficult in a storm situation. We just have so much work. And uh, now that we've um, installed a bridge where we can have access into uh, Lewis Woodlands, that, that would be a great place where, you know, we could use that chipper. Um, and uh, just, I think we have a lot of needs. And, um, I don't know what, what the town uses, but I don't, Mike, do you know? The town has a gigantic tow behind chipper that you kind of need to use your class A right, right. EDL license driver to bring it. Right. The only thing I would recommend is to make sure that we get the proper training on, um, you know, chipper work. So. Well, I'm sure whoever we buy it from, sir, will come and, you know, give them their lowdown on the machine and give us some kind of certification. Well, I, Just like the Nimer, there, there is some, um, you know, some uh, workshops or something that we can do, too. 
Can you find out the difference in estimated cost between your standard chipper and the the safer ones? Yeah, no, I I, I can do more investigation, but. Again, we're going through state bids, so I either have to take what they offer or I have to put out one of those, you know, RFPs or requests for bids, and then it takes a real long time. What I've been looking to do is I've been checking all their uh, contractors that we can buy from and seeing if anybody has one on their site that I can get. So I'm doing with the roller and the chipper right now just to see if anybody, maybe there's an old last, last, last year model left over I can grab. I'm not looking for a bells and whistles. I'm just looking for something that works and it's going to be safe for you guys. I guess I was talking about the bells and whistles. I'd, I'd like to see us have one of those chippers where the gloves have it go on and off. If the glove gets too close um, to the inside of the chipper, the chipper shuts down. Yeah, no, I agree with you. We've talked about this from the get-go, sir. Uh, but the issue is, and I'm just telling you money-wise, is every one of those pairs of gloves is a couple hundred dollars. And each guy on the crew, you know, whoever's walking the brush over there, so you're going to have to supply, I'm not saying every man, but a bunch of pairs of gloves, especially nowadays with COVID and no one wants to touch what someone else already touched. I understand. Well, that I, 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 would, I would think we, we could get away with maybe three or four pairs of gloves. And have a cutting and crew. That is an added cost, but I think that the safety benefits well worth it. Uh, the other thing I want to point out to the board is that, um, over the past number of years, uh, we have a lot more skilled um, men in our public works department, than, and we are actually taking down more trees than ever, you know, that are dangerous or, you know, that needed need to come down. So it's a tremendous cost savings because we all know the cost of uh, removing trees. And um, so that, you know, can, and with the chipper, then we can, you know, complete the job. So I think it, it would definitely uh, pay for itself. I, I just like to counter that with uh, tree service is one of the most dangerous jobs there is to have. And, you know, unless you're a professional and we have one who's a former professional, I under, I get that. But unless you're a professional, um, you know, there's a lot of inherent dangers. And, you know, I, I, especially the bigger jobs, I mean, we can't do anything that would require a crane, obviously. Um, but, you um, I, th I think we need to be very judicious and concerning about what trees we take down and, and, and what work we do because the, the dangers are, are there. And, um, you know, it's, it, it just, it concerns me. Absolutely. We don't do anything out of uh, just pure enjoyment to go and cut it and watch it fall and see what happens. Everything is well planned out. We haven't taken on even the trees that, the big ones in the park, uh, we didn't bother with because they're, as you said, a crane. And and yes, we will use our bucket truck and go up to 20 feet and trim trees, and which we would need the chipper for, uh, like along Main uh, West Street and things like that. But no, we don't get, I mean, I'm not going to get involved. I'm not going to risk these guys for a 24-inch oak tree just because I want to take it down. The, the chipper is definitely needed in this village. It's been needed for years. Uh but yeah, no, I'll follow all the safety I, protocol. I, just, I, just I, make sure I you don't disagree with the need for the cost. chipper. Who what? Don't, I don't disagree with the need for the chipper. If we were able to get a chipper of our own, would we be open to entering into some kind of shared services agreement with Village of Florida or another municipality? We do a shared services agreement with them on everything just because whatever we don't have and they have we it, you know it's it, that's the village way is we gotta if you have it and we need it or we have it and you need it we share uh right now my one of my loaders the older one that we replaced is over in greenwood lake because theirs blew up so you know we do what we gotta do to help each other out it's it's a unofficial shared services i know mr cheney you would like to see it in paperwork because that's the county way uh, I, that's legal. That's somebody else. But yes, I have very good uh, understanding with Fuzzy over there in Florida. If he needs something, he uses our bucket truck at times. We need something. It works out very well. Something formalized, I could see it being done, but that is above my pay grade. Well, you know what? Um, it, it would possibly be a, a open contract with sort of an inventory of um, the things that we have. 
and uh, you know the same coming from Florida and the same coming from the town, so that we just have an overall picture of what we possibly can borrow. I, I think that understanding is is out there amongst the the DPW supervisors. They work well together, um, and with the commissioner of the town, um, you know, I, I think as we go forward and buy something new, I think it's really worth looking into the the concept of you know joining together contributing to the capital cost and then having an agreement as trustee bachman suggesting um so you know what works now is fine the, I, I think mike the the chipper is kind of a different thing because like every time we need it you know it's usually a storm after a storm if we need it in an emergency and Florida's got three or four or five days worth of chipping that they have to do to, to clear their their streets. So the, the chipper is a little difficult to yeah, it's rely hard to take on. It from the guy who owns it, and he's got the same problem. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Where my curbs and sidewalks, we have multiple places where the slate needs to be replaced, uh, whether it's going to be we need to put the, uh, the handicap ramp in or just replace it with slabs of concrete. Country lane, uh, depending on weather and what happens with the next round of COVID people, I want it, it's still in the books for us to replace that uh, drainage line running down country lane. It's rotted out. Uh, when we do that, we're going to have to replace the curbs and sidewalks going down country lane right that's the top room yeah yeah it, it, uh, and, it, and it, there are many spots throughout the village now where the roots from the street tree has uh popped the sidewalk so we have to get the company come in to grind the roots and then we have to replace the slab hopefully sometimes the slate goes back down we don't do all that but as you saw over on cottage street and a few others as soon as they got the roots out we had to pour a new sidewalk So country lane, right now, the storm sewer line is under the sidewalk? Same as it was on southern lane. It runs right along the edge of the curb line. So as soon as I disrupt it, it's going to come right in. I have, to, I have to take at least, you know, it'd be unusable by the time I was finished. And, and, and that's in this year's budget? Country lane is in this year's budget. I want to get by all the materials uh, before June so I have them and then just us put it in. But there's no way I'll have the sidewalk done before June. No, okay. I don't even know if they'll right. have concrete, you know, ready to go. So right. we had it in this year's budget for twenty five thousand. So what are you looking to spend this year, and then? Well, that's so I'm going to buy all. The, I'm going to buy all my item, all the pipe, and all that stuff. So that's probably going to be about the fifteen of the twenty five thousand for okay. country lane, and then I just need to do the sidewalk, which would probably be another ten. So we should next cut year. that down to 10? For the next year, the rollover, the 10 for that, but I still need this the money for the slate replacement and the root grinding. So if you want to take 10 off of that and leave me 15, but I can't only take 10. Okay. 15 it is. So five for the slate replacement. Uh, the rest of Mike, the Mike, do, are, you have, oh, oh, oh. Do, you, do you have a list of the, the slate replacement? No, sir. Uh, I was speaking with the mayor and Mr. Limber. We're doing these sidewalks where we're going around. Okay. I'm going to do uh, the first section. Yeah, I do believe you're involved too, sir. Uh, that part that goes that St. Anthony started is supposed to be a walkable loop from the people of St. Anthony's and the uh, rehab. So they can walk people down. It goes from St. Anthony's down Main yeah. Street, down South Street, all the way to Linden. Linden, up and around and down Oakland all the way back. So it's going to be some, you know, we need to do some handicap ramps. There's a few spots where, again, the street trees are messed up. There's also spots uh, adjacent to that first street parking lot, which would be ours anyway, that need to be, you know, fixed up. Over by the bus stop, there's a few spots that need to be patched up. Okay. Thank you. Uh, maintenance supplies, those are just the tools we use every day shovels uh, things uh, they're actually being used and 
abused on the jobs because we're using them. So we have to replace them every so often. Uh, special department supplies. Those I tend to find little things that we need for either jobs, whether it be the bridge building or things. So uh, I just need some money to anything on that side. Training there is for the men. Uh, street patch is the uh, coal patch and hot asphalt we use, whether it be coal patch now for all the potholes. I'm sure you're seeing popping out throughout the village and the hot stuff for after uh, our excavations, whether it be sewer or water or catch basins. The plant was closed last year, so we had to scramble anywhere to get asphalt. That's why there's so much money probably left in that line now. We had to go to Middletown and or Jersey or anywhere else to get asphalt last year. The next line is the road paving that we do that's not covered by chips. Uh, I had somewhere a couple roads. I'm looking to try to accomplish this year. I want to get this is all just hopeful. Grant Street there, a two inch top course from Maple to the village line. On Van Duzer, I want to top course that. Cherry Street, Orchard Street. I'm going to bring a, a Charlie Jones in to see about milling that top or what I can do about the top section that has been. Uh, Looks like a mess for a number of years. I know the asphalt is very shallow there and there's a gas line, a few other things we have to go against, but I wanna to try to keep the curb revealed. Oakland Court is uh, in very rough shape and Robert Drive, I wanna take a look at, uh, even if it's just the cap atop of Robert Drive there, that is, uh, took a lot of beating over the winter, uh, actually last winter too, but the asphalt, on Robert Drive is from the original contractor and it was only a binder course that was put on. So he got his money's worth out of it. And now it's time to do something. Probably that whole development over the next few years will have to be done like we did Pond Hill. I'm going to try to do more of a piecemeal there. It's easier with the way the roads are split up. It would have been impossible to do Pond Hill. That way you'd have chopped meat, you know, one road done and then a drop down to a two inch drop down to one of these side roads. So that's why we did that all at one time. On, on the street patch, Mike, um, if looking at our, our history of, of spending, um, granted, we've dropped the, the budget pretty much uh, the last three years, um, and you're suggesting dropping it this year, but, you know, I mean, we, we haven't, I guess, ever come close to $30,000 in the last five years. Uh, really? I understand. I just don't know how, what the price change is going to be on asphalt this year. Everything's going to go up no matter what. I can drop it. I just, you know, it's going to depend on what we get done. Last year, I, you know, we didn't do very much over the summertime as well as patching. I didn't even rip the road open nearly as many times as I planned on last year. You know, as you know, there's hydrants that still need to be fixed. As soon as I tear that road up to do that, that's where that money comes from for all that. And, and last year was a pretty decent winter that it didn't really. Yeah, we didn't get chopped up too bad. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm fine. If you wanted to cut that down, uh, you know, there's, there's fine. There's ways I can do things. And then the last line in that budget is the, as we said, the street signs and the line painting. I'm sure if you drove through any point, you see that everything is faded. I need to do. Everything, uh, the crosswalks, the parking spots, the handicap spots, the loading zones, the yeah. fire zones, you name it, it needs to be painted. Mm -hmm. Okay, next is chips, 85112. Do we know how much money we're getting from chips? Chips, well, they sent us a letter saying what it was because what it is is uh, during COVID, they sent us a letter saying they're cutting out our chips money by 20% uh, for this coming year. And then they came back at the uh, end of January and said that they're not going to do the 20%. They're only going to take 10% from us now, depending on how things go. So the number we had in January was like a, well, if you include all of it, I think it says 130. Yeah. Yeah, this is, the 104 is the 20% cut with the 20% cut. 
the fact that the uh, Congress passed the um, the new bill, obviously it's going to go through. It means New York's going to get a whole stack of money. Do you believe that we're going to go back up to the one thirty? Yes, sir. So can we change that back to the one thirty? Although the higher up, see, the I don't know if that's true. Speaking. Because the email that Kathy and I were on about the, the funding, um, Kathy had put it for the full amount and they came back and said no. Um, I'll have to find that email. Yeah, we're kind of at their discretion. Whatever they want to give us is what they're going to give us. Yeah. The fact that, that that's why I keep the 100,000 because expense. when they, when they take the loan. Right. We're good. Well, no, what was Mike's point? Uh, you, you said something, but others were talking. I said, whatever we put as an expense, we also put in as income. So if our income goes down, then our expense will go down. We will only spend what we get. Right. So if we so put the would... 130 in there, then our income will show 130. If we do not get 130, then we won't spend 130. Yeah, she so what, said what, we're not getting it. What not what, what, hap what happens if we um, put in 110 and get 130? Can we spend? Then it? we can spend 20,000 more. So so it really doesn't matter one way or the other. It, no, does, it, doesn't. it doesn't impede us. No. Okay. I mean, Mike, we can um, all four. And if we get more money, then the Mike can spend more money. If okay. we, um, normally that's a, a wash. Sometimes we spend a little bit more on anticipating what's coming in. But if we leave the 104 and more money comes in, clearly it's, it's spendable. Yeah. Okay. Mike, going back to the salt, um, where, where do we stand? Do you, do you have an updated number? Because I'm sure that we bought more salt than we what the numbers salt. reflect. For this year to date, yeah, which would have been early March, um, and and then uh, how much more do we need? How how much? What's the cost of what we need to spend in order to meet our contractual obligation with our minimum? Change it before make a final. We on snow now. We're on snow, berries on snow remove. All right, we want to go. I'll get back to you, sir, with your salt. Let's. I'll finish the snow. Snow, salt supplies. Um, yeah, we have to buy, I put in for, uh, I think, 1,200 ton. We have to buy contract by 70% of that. As of right now, I think we're at 700 and something ton I already bought. We haven't paid for it all yet because right. some of it's still coming in. Uh, what it is, is every load we get is usually about 30, 35 ton from the cargo. And it's 2,500 bucks, about. Uh, they owe us probably another, yeah. I, I'd hate to take away the salt money. No, I wasn't, I was just curious as to where we stood relative to, oh, we'll to be filling, filling the shed. Oh no, the shed right now is full. Uh, I probably have room for maybe another 60 ton, maybe, maybe. I don't think I get another hundred ton in the, in the door, which is why last year we went and put those tarps down around the front and covered everything. We're, we're prepared if they do deliver us more because we do have more to take. And if we have no more storms, then we will be taking it and shoving it up in the roof rafters. Uh, but the price of salt is going to go up again next year. So I'd be short to cut any of that money either. I mean, if you wanted to take 10,000 or something to make a budget line, but I, I, I'd be afraid. Okay. And if next year we get all the snow that we didn't get two years ago, we've been lucky. We've only gotten one or two bad storms and these piddly ones in between. Thank you. Well, what's the salt on that you want to talk about? We need to build a new salt barn. Uh, the one we have, as you heard, only holds about, I'd say, on a good day, five, maybe 600 ton of salt. You can jam in there if you're lucky. And then we go to tarps outside. Uh, and what we're finding is they'd rather deliver all the salt or most of the salt early.
early in the year, and then it's up to you to divvy out how you go. Uh, a couple weeks ago, when the storm hit, we had zero salt. We had nothing in our barn. Everything was on back ordered everywhere. Kathy was calling uh, upstate, ev everywhere she possibly could. And thankfully, finally, right before the last storm hit us, we got salt. Uh, their answer in Cargill, who we buy it from, and they told Ben at the town the same exact thing, is it being our best interest to build a larger salt storage facility so that we don't have to worry about this stuff. I know it's a big ticket it item. It'll cost you probably 300000 plus to get it in the ground. Uh, I just wanted to leave it as a place marker. I'm not looking for anything this year like that. I know that everything is tight. I just want to leave it on your head. And what what would happen to the present salt barn? I could, well, I could use it for storage. I could use it for salt storage. It is over the, uh, I think the DEC wants it moved because where uh, leaches or leaks out, it could go into the aquifer. So I think that spot would be cleared and probably used for, you know, something else. That, and this would be on the same location though, right? No, sir. It has to go over to, we want to move it away from where it would, where it's in a questionable area by the, the streams. We're going to put it all the way over by where our uh, our trailer is, and and we have we have land to clear there. Plenty of room. Okay, Parks, seventy one forty. Before we move to Parks, where are where would the street lights be, Mike? Is that back in streets? Streets, yes. Uh, um. We have the uh, opportunity um, to convert the street lights to LED. Mr. Veneri, I gave you all that information. Yes, you did. You see it as something that we would do a long-term borrowing for, or do we look to have the uh, company that we hire um, provide the financing? You know, it's a tough, a tough question. You've asked me about this, and I read over your stuff or the stuff that they gave us. My, my real concern is um, that our priority right now is the sewer plant. I wish we would have something definitive about that, so then we can figure out what to do about uh, the lighting. I don't want to be able to borrow more money now. And then when we go to the bank for the uh, sewer plant, uh, interim financing, that they think then we have too much out there. Um, don't forget, we're with a new bank. I'd rather first get approval from the bank on our bond that we think we're going to need before we go out for any more. Um, and I'd like to discuss this with you a little bit more, if you don't mind. Okay. I mean, I, I, I see us doing it. I expect one way or the other, but um, if, if, if we don't finance it, then uh, it, it'll get, it should get covered by the difference in, in cost. Uh, what I'd like to do is simply saved. sit down and put some uh, numbers to a piece of paper and so everyone is comfortable with exactly um, what the whole thing is about and what we're, how we're going to save and how it's going to, what, what it's going to cost us, how long it's going to take. Um, I think I'd like to, you know, present okay. something to everybody. So it's, um, it's clear and then we can follow it over the years to see if our projections correct. Okay. Um, I just want to, before we move and forward. And that doesn't mean we can't do it in this budget. It's just that, we're not ready yet, at least I'm not. And uh, I'll be talking to you, uh, Barry, about it over the next week or so and see where it goes. And if I can present something and everybody's comfortable with it, then, then maybe we can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I just had a question about the possibility of a new salt barn. Um, obviously there's a need. Uh, is there any uh, preliminary work we can do? Is there engineering or design or um, you know, anything like that that could be done this year so that next year we would be prepared then to move forward with the project? 
I know oh, that yeah, that wouldn't be not uh, on, on that, this line. It would be probably under engineering, I imagine. Yeah, that but that makes sense. Yes. Well, I think we're we, if we're going to we're gonna do the engineering, then we're going to be committed to the barn. Well, um, we we need to be committed to the barn, sir. Well, then if we're committed to the barn, then yeah, I don't see why we can't do the preliminary engineering, and then we're going to have to figure out how to pay for it. And that goes for even, uh, we did have a grant that we uh, applied for two years actually and did not get it. Um, and um, I think if we were shovel ready, it would put us in a better position to potentially apply for a grant and, and get the money. Yeah, and the, and the, other, the other point is, um, the question might be, do we have the money for the bond? And the answer is yes. But the question, but the answer to that, um, having said that, we also have to determine uh, whether that bond comes in as infrastructure um, monies, uh, and whether we're going to use infrastructure monies for something that's more, um, not more important, but more on on the scale of one to ten. Where does the bond fit in compared to maybe uh, a couple of other things that are might more uh, might are required more, and if we're going to use the infrastructure money for that. So I see no, re if, if we're all agreeing that we need it and we all want to do it, then yes, if we do the engineering and find out the cost and have that all ready, um, then we have to make a decision over the next six, eight months where the money's going to come from. Okay. I have a couple more questions about the salt barn. Uh, how old is the current one and um, how long do the structures usually last? And with a price tag estimated to be around $300,000, does that include removal of the present salt barn to make way for the potential of the new one? The one we're working with, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong because it was before I was here, I was told it was built in the 90s by a father and son team who built it on site as is with uh, you know a few beams and it, it served its purpose it's still standing a few walls are very shaky uh, but the pillars are still fine uh, I had met with Mr. Cheney and I met with I, one of the gentlemen from Barton and the Judas a few years ago when we were looking at the first round of uh, grants for the salt barn and at that point, I met with a gentleman from Dome, Dome Corporation of North America. And they're the ones that you see on the side of the highway, those salt domes. They're uh, very easy to get product in and out of. The, they take up a whole lot less room. Uh, and uh, at that point, he gave me an engineering estimate of 10000 And then the construction would have been 240000 for the dome. But we had to do a site prep uh, of concrete and put electrical to it and things like that, which has been another 30 for the whole kit and caboodle. But that was again, you know, two years ago or so. Uh, the old one, I don't know what we would do with it. I don't know if it's worth saving as a secondary structure or cold storage. We can put a front on it and use it as another uh, bay. The damage done by the uh, salt over the years probably would deem the building not usable and we would just take it down and probably use that area more for uh, garbage transfer uh, right by that spot. Now we use for the municipal garbage. So it's kind of a ramp with two big dumpsters next to it. So we could probably make more use of that room that way. So perhaps what we should do when we get to engineering is add $10,000 for engineering for the salt bond in this year's budget. Yes, sir. I, I don't think 10 is going to do it. I think the 10 was some preliminary engineering that they were going to do. I don't think that is biased plans and specs. We can put 10 in as a placeholder. Let me contact some of the engineering firms and uh, see what the better, uh, more accurate price might be. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I guess I, quest I, I wonder too, um, the firm that Mike spoke to if there was a, a certain level, since these are kind of used over, you know, the same design is used over and over again, that 
things come as almost pre-engineered. I I'm curious about that. So the 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 upper portion is, but as Mike said, we've got electrical. We've got to do concrete work, site prep um, before they build the dome, the wooden dome over it. So okay, okay. Um, you're you're right, but there's complicating factors. Okay. Onward. Parks. That's all we have left. Yeah. Uh, under equipment for parks, we need to put additional cameras at the parks. Uh, a few at Stanley Deming, maybe one or two at Memorial Park, depending on where we go. Uh, also, there are more poles with lights along the walkway that goes around Deming. Uh, it tends to be dark in spots, so we'd like to lighten that up. So we need to buy more of those decorative poles and have them lit in there. One of the zero turns, uh, we've been buying zero turns that are just, you know, maybe a little bit better than homeowner, a little commercial grade zero turns. Uh, all the cutting we got, they're getting worn down quickly. So I need to replace one of those. Mike, Mike that's not the Jacobson, right? That, that's not no, the big Jacobson. It's no, the sir. it's one of the zero turns. Just, yeah, just, uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, and and then um, the uh, I think before that, um, you had in there for the code blue for Stanley Deming. Yes, yeah, so no, that Kathy's still working on that to be purchased this budget year. That was approved for now. She still got, we have paperwork upstairs where she's been chasing this thing for months and the cabinet and everything. So um, well, I'm, I, I thought we already owned the cabinet. We don't? No. What, what for the new one? Wait, I thought we already owned the code blue cabinet for Stanley Deming. No, we have it. We have a defibrillator cabinet. And then, but it's not the same. It's only about yay big, like the one upstairs. Yeah, no, that's that's what they sent us with it. And she tried to send it back because we want that same unit that is in Memorial Park, but it's made by two different people and she's having a heck of a time. Two different companies. Oh, right. No, the, the, the little white cabinet with the glass front is from the defibrillator company. Yeah, okay. So you're hoping it'll get done this year? Yeah, I still have May and June or April, May, one of them. Well, what's the what's the hang up? Getting the getting it here. She I'm telling you, she you talked to Kathy. She's been on the phone with them and sending emails. So they don't have them. She, they, they don't have back a, order. She, an inventory, gets, it's back order? Okay. Yeah, she gets in some kind of loop with people and then she's on the phone for two and a half hours. Thanks. You got it. Toolcat attachments. Uh, if we're going to be doing more along the lines of these uh, paths and things of that nature, we need to get more stuff for our toolcat kept in the woods. Uh, saws, weed whackers, and push mowers are always needed. Uh, and then this morning, when I met with Mr. Lindbergh, you were talking about light poles over at that over 35 field. Uh, but that's still, I could still manage it underneath the 45,000. And you had netting in there for the netting is at the repairs. That's under the next line, sir. Uh, oh, sorry. That 35 field right now is a wire mesh netting type of thing hanging from the top of the roof there, straight down. It's bowed and torn and uh, probably a good way to get a tetanus shot. So I want to tear all that down. Now that we have the bucket truck, we can get that high ourselves, take it down, buy that new safety netting, staple in. It shouldn't be a big to-do for the guys to do. So you're talking about a fabric netting? Yes, sir. Okay, because that's certainly not going to last as long as the... Um, no, but you the, certainly like the welded get wire. cuts. You're not going to get all them cuts on your fingers and those kids putting their hands through. And the bottom of that metal one, I'm sure you've seen it, is all bowed up and rounded off and gets caught in my lawnmowers and everything else. So that fabric won't happen. Well, where does the, I'm trying to remember, does the netting extend all the way to the ground? Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe we better, maybe we'd be better off of it not extending all the way to the ground and put, you know, wood or something down below. Well, it was, you know, when they put it in, they, they framed it, but the framing is all, all gone and it's just wires sticking out and it, you know, they're bent up at a 45, half of them. I, you're right. That's not good. Okay. 
Uh, on that same building, that, the over 35 field, on the other side is a storage room. That roof is uh, Swiss cheese. You could walk right through it. There's a few dugouts uh, that need repairs. They need to be repointed. Uh, the one on the over 35 field that has the little maintenance shed in on the left, on the, third, on the first base side, that needs some work. And fences in every park are in bad shape, including Deming, where the gentleman from the corner of 3rd Street and his new fancy donut shop, whatever he's trying to put in, decided during the big storms, he was pushing the snow across the street into Deming. So that entire fence now is disconnected. So I got to go through and we hook all that. He's been told. Topsoil, uh, we need to do more clay at the Little League Fields. We touched some up last year. We have more to do. Uh, you, you, do, you do have a big pile still in Memorial Park for infield. And I know th over 35 needs it probably worse than the little league fields. Yeah. So I figure we're probably going to need another load of that before the end of the season next year. Uh, the rubber compound that is on the new playground of dreams around the uh, top spinner cycle thing, the dizzy maker uh, it's starting to get chopped up already. So that's going to have to be not the whole thing, but parts of it are going to have to be framed out and report to make that safe again. I don't know a price on that. I do know when they came in the first time, it was very expensive. Uh, seed hay, an item for all of our things, like when we're putting the sidewalks and or uh, pathways through the parks. I scratched off the bocce court on the bottom. No objections. I don't mine. know. That was mine. <laughs> that, was, that, that was my input. First things first. Yeah, we could How always... Much Revisit that. How much did you figure the bocce court was going to be? Uh, it depends on how you want it constructed. When we first talked to the people who wanted it, uh, it wasn't going to be that bad. And then they decided that it had to have or should have clamshells and uh, some other material that was going to cost me a lot for a sub base that it got over, I think, I don't know what it was by the time I finished with all the wood. I think it was going to be 2000 per bocce court. And they wanted two of them between the pressure treated wood and everything else and be clearing. And so, well, could we, by clamshells, you're, you're talking about ground clamshells making up the base. Yeah. That they, that they the bocce okay. balls on and it has to be, according to them, you're supposed to, you know, level it out every day, but uh, have some on hand and, you know, take care of that court monthly. What's the alternative to the clamshell item? Well, I mean, we could. I mean, on we my could side, item out. crusher dust. Uh, okay, I, we seen... could we could we could frame it out and put crusher dust in there, and and two years down the road or three years down the road, if we we had the ability to do it, then replace it with the clamshell because the crusher dust would be a lot less expensive. I've seen it where it's just grass. You know, they could just have grass yep. for it yep. framed out. Uh, it, and we'll have to revisit because the spots where we originally thought have already been you know, move some other stuff and move around. And they were talking about having it over there by the pavilion. Maybe it'd be better to put in their giant luscious lawn in front of the post office. A perfect spot. No, listen. Anyway. Uh, but that's uh, on private property. Yeah. They're uh, the only ones using it. That's right. That's right. That's what he's talking about, Barry. Uh, but I believe, um, you know, just as um, municipal entity that we should pursue this. Um, and uh, what, why? Because it is a recreation for older, our older citizens. Uh, usually that's who the, um, that appeals to, you know, the same with pickleball and some of these other things. But I think just to be, you know, to, to be re, uh, fair and resourceful, I think it would be, it would be appropriate to do something like this. We don't have to do the deluxe version, but we surely could figure it out. Sure. We had uh, years ago, we had a uh, number of gentlemen from Warburg Grove actually helped us with some projects. You know, they painted quite a few benches at Stanley Deming. They, they redid the roof, you know, in the wishing well, you know, 10 years ago. So maybe, maybe we can enlist some help from them. I bet we could. Yeah. Yeah.
the next one is the AEDs. That's your annual maintenance. And again, that's money for that Stanley Deming unit that we're still waiting on or see what happens with and if it shows up. Special department supplies, playground parts. Uh, we've already had to replace part of the xylophone and part of the wind chimer and something else. So those are going to be parts that we maintain. Uh, tables and grills to go on that McFarland path or up on the top by the uh, wishing well. Basketball and skate park repairs, the basketball hoops, the backboards by about time one or two of them need to be replaced. Uh, and that was where I had the light poles at Deming that we spoke about already. Special projects, the McFarland path has to be extended to go across the side of the park there on the top side by the parking lot. Uh, we have planned repairs in Lewis Woodland. As the mayor said, the bridge is almost finished. The bridge is down. The decking is down. Uh, RIP is currently working on the railings. So that should be take care of that. And then we can be able to get machinery into the backside of Lewis Woodlands. Uh, bas uh, the baseball field at Deming, uh, right there on the side of the stream. I figured if we clean that up a little, give them another spot to run some of these little league practices instead of them. I've heard a few times they've been practicing in uh, parking lots or things like that. I don't know if you want to give them an extra spot that wouldn't take much to fix that up. And then uh, we need to pave the front of Memorial Park Drive from uh, Forrester. Is that Forrester? Yeah. Forrester into that first bump there past the skate park. It, it, is there a way we can do it so that it doesn't come out so nice that people can't control their speed? Can we just it ripple just, it, it the whole way? I don't it, use the it, whole it, I mean, it just it just seems to me that you know you 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 go ahead and you pave something and and all of a sudden people think the speed limits uh, or, an, or, an, or an acceptable speed is ten or fifteen miles above what it should be. Yeah, it's more speed bumps. And and I guess if we if we end up doing it, um, we're going to have to plan to do something along the edges because that seems to be where most of the crumbling is taking place. Um, you know, just, you know, whether we put some item in there and. Yeah. The back need to be backfilled. They haven't been properly. If you looked at the edge of the road there in Memorial park, it looks like they just skim coated it to the, go to the grass. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. So it needs, it needs to have a, a back or you know, down the side. We need to curb it or something. At least with item. Storm sewer? Yeah. Storm sewers. Storm sewer. Uh, drainage project. I'm still oh. uh, waiting for the. I'm following. sorry, Mike. Who Mike, I? Just um, did did you talk about cameras? Yes. You have cameras in there, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, to date, I've been very disappointed with how the cameras have functioned. They've been there for years. It just seems that every time something happens. We don't have footage, um, and and so I just want to make sure that we're that the whole the complete system is going to function the way we intend it to function, because to it, you know it's really frustrating to have something happen and then go and say well we don't we don't have uh, any record of what's going on. As of now, we have I do believe about ten eleven. Cameras throughout the village, and nine, no, eight. I think eight of them are working. Uh, we we have quotes to put the new ones in that Mr. Lindbergh's been looking for in the parks, but I pulled them all back this year. And the last two bills that they sent, because I told them we we're not going to pay them anymore until everything is up to snuff. One or two of them is electrical issues. The one at the uh, bathrooms, uh, the breaker was tripped and burned out the electrician said you get there i'm just waiting for him to flip that over and that won't work again the one at the basketball court someone has tampered with the breaker it was it still is it's too far low to the ground uh anybody can get to that box and they mess with it all the time we constantly see that one bit and played with uh i don't know which other one doesn't work without being by my computer so we told so, them so there are not we can't lock that box yeah no they just cut the thing off the lock is always laying there broken. They break the hasp off. It isn't an everyday type of thing, but when they want to turn them off, they, you know, someone has to do it. Uh, 
So we kind of told them we're not going to put any new in anything until they get everything up to snuff. They had a guy come here, two guys come here a week or so. Uh, no, it was longer than that. And they got all the those first ones up because for a while here, we only had maybe six of them working. So now we're up to, I think, nine or ten. I, Mr. Lindbergh saw them this morning. Most of them are on. Uh, but, yeah, no, I agree. I, I, uh, they should be giving us more for what we're paying them. I will work more on that. I don't have a stake in the fire. Well, and, and especially when, you know, as we add things, just make sure the, the system can accommodate it. Yeah, we waited a long time. I don't know if you remember from our meetings, we waited a long time for those to be hooked up at Keith's place, you know, the, the raw water plant and the sewage treatment plant. Those just went online probably the three weeks yeah. ago when those people were here. Is the first yeah, I, I mean, and that was internet issues, right? Yeah, and that's what, you know, the, the two of them kept telling me one was the other and one was the other. So we played this game for months now. Yes. Okay, thank you. The drainage products, uh, projects, Mr. Getz and I have been working on this Wheeler Avenue culvert. Uh, the best bet now is for a precast structure to be dropped in. We've met with two or three contractors for uh, spray lining concrete underneath the, the road. It's just not feasible. So it's gotta be a rip out and rep uh, replace. It's gonna be a big one. So that's been on the, on the charts for a while. Country Lane, as I told you before, I'm hoping that I can buy the materials this year. That's just in case, I, whatever I cannot foresee happening as we get there. Uh, materials and supplies goes with every catch basin we got to fix every time, whether it be a complete replace with a precast or pipes and grading and, and frames. Okay. refuse the cub grinder uh the residents we've had a couple rough winters rough storms rough everything the residents are bringing us yard waste at a tremendous rate we have called him in i think he just left the other day i think that was the third time he had to come this year to grind uh, every tub grinding, I think, is $4,500 or something like that for him to come for the day. Uh, it is a needed thing. I add, you know. Then we turn. We into, have a grinder? We have a guy come in and grind it. It's way too big. The guy up there on uh, Warwick, uh, by the prison, comes in. And then Which we use that material in our bedding or we turn it into compost and people take it as we put it outside in the bins. It is usually goes out quickly, but we have a lot of it right now. Do we, could we buy a tub grinder and do it ourselves? Oh, we, sure. I certainly can. I, I, I think what the cost of the tub, what the cost of the tub grinder would be, um, including, you know, the 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 grinding teeth um be, having to replace them um it, it would be cost prohibitive what's something like that go for a couple hundred thousand probably yeah, i'd mike? say 400 it's a it's a big thing uh mike and it's also the the safety part of it i would be very concerned with i think our insurance <laughs> would frown on it and or raise our you know. well, I will certainly take one if you want to buy one. No, no, no. <laughs> I didn't say I wanted to buy one. I'm just curious. <laughs> Somebody you want to get rid of, Mike? Is that the case? What? Somebody you want to get rid of? <laughs> Bones and all. Everything will be gone. Now, now easy now. Easy. <laughs> sewer plant. Uh, my line is the sewer collection system. system. Uh, uh, what I'd like to see is we are cruising around with a 1994 tow behind sewer jet. Uh, it's got a three quarter inch hose on it. It's supposed to be 600 feet long. It's probably, the hose can be replaced, but that's not the thing. Uh, it's a tow behind. It takes up a lot of room. It's hard to get into anywhere. It's when we're doing um, laterals off of people's houses, it's quite a hassle to get the trailer there, get anything there. It's old, it's served its time. Uh, they now make a sewer jet that goes on the back of the same kind of F450, 350 that we have the 
uh, new bucket truck on. So it would be the same size, you know, my, plus the wheel on the back. So you add an additional four feet off the back of a truck. It would be the same lay length as a standardized pickup truck. So it'd be easier to get anywhere we need to go. We find it uh, recently, we've had problems at that uh, rain is pizza and the sewer line goes from there across the underneath main street into the backyards there going between that uh, nail place and Mr. Leibolt's property. Getting the sewer jet in there was uh, would have been easier with the helicopter than the way we had to get it in there. So uh, with the way things are going and people are building and us losing more and more space, I need something a little tighter to get into these environments. That's it. Anything else? Did I tell you how nice your suit looked today, sir? What? That's a, that's a wonderful tie you have on there. Um, I have helped before, won't now. <laughs> Mike, are, uh, are street trees under your? No, sir. That's under Mr. Sherman's budget, I do believe. I, I've, okay. I don't play with the shade tree. Okay, I just thought maybe it was under or Maureen. I, I, I didn't have that one yet. Yeah, it's under Maureen. Maureen. Oh, under Maureen. Hmm. Okay. Anything else, Michael? I'm good. Okay. I guess we're done for today then. Very good. Good job. Okay. Thank you very much. Amending the meeting. Okay. Okay.